used to be the girl who couldn't cry. My heart was so empty, and I didn't know why. Living in the future and the past, but never in the moment, because the moment never lasts. The finish line was all that I could see. Until you spoke those words that set me free. The joy is in the journey. Every step I take, it's a choice I make now. The joy is in the journey. One day at a time, I'm learning to find who I am. I used to be afraid of letting go, afraid of standing still, afraid to grow. See how far I've come with you. And now my faith is stronger than the fears that I walk through. I'm learning to find who I am And I will find my own voice in my own way And I will live and I will love and I will pray To know the joy is in the joy a choice I make now, the joy is in the journey, yeah, one day at a time, I'm learning to find who I am, one day at a time, I'm learning to find Karen Armstrong. Well, good morning. I'm so happy to have you here. And those of you who are with us in the wonderful world of Zoom and on Facebook, we are glad to have you with us as well. So as I start this morning, um, completely the opposite of the talk I'm going to give. I'm very excited about our guests this morning. We have with us our Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen and Charlie Steen, her husband, are here. So let us acknowledge you and love you. Yay, we're so glad you're here. Oh, they've just come to us lock, stock, and barrel from Oregon, and boy, are we glad that you're here and you're safe, and we're glad to have you. Uh, so that was the upbeat part. Now I'm going to talk about depression, okay? Uh, because, no, honestly, since, uh, since COVID started, I have been hearing from people. It started like as a little trickle, you know? I notice I'm a little depressed. And then it just continued and continued, and so I would hear from people more and more, and so I thought, okay, 
Let me think about this. Now, truly, 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 at the big absolute level, if I chunk way up, in the infinite mind of God, there is no depression. God does not know anything about depression. Depression is a human experience. It's something that we have made up. It's what we have believed were true if God were not all, if God's infinite, loving, intelligent presence were not all. To say to yourself, oh, I'm just depressed, is not an intelligent use of the principle that we work with, okay? Because as soon as you say that, you're reinforcing it. And I understand, I understand. And I know that depression is a wide category, that there are all kinds of depression. And, and the depression that I am not talking about is the depression where people cannot pull them up pull themselves up from their bootstraps because they actually don't have any bootstraps. So this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the type of depression that many people, including myself, have experienced during COVID where it's just more than we seemed prepared for. I think depression exists when our thoughts and our perceptions and our observations of life begin to match those negative expectations that we've created for ourselves uh, and, and the world that, that we're living in. If you expect people to be awful, you know what's amazing is they show up awful. Isn't that extraordinary? If you know like, oh, I've got to meet with this person and I know they're going to be a jerk, you know they will show up and be a jerk. Isn't that amazing? But it is also absolutely principled. If before you have that meeting you say, you know, I've heard terrible things about this person, but I get to have my own experience. Principle is not bound by precedent. So here and now, I'm going to call forth that presence of spirit within that person, and I know that presence of spirit in them is the presence that meets spirit in me, and all is well. See, I think people become depressed, because I've had a lot of time to think about this, because I too have rolled around on my sofa and on the living room floor and whatnot, that people become depressed when they are not encouraged, and so for me, this becomes really important that you know, part of my job in life is to encourage people, to believe in other people, and I really do. I think that people become depressed when they're not um, reinforced in a life-affirming way, and people become depressed when they don't believe that who they are, as an emanation of the Most High God, who they are is good. See, you know, I know many types of of depression out there. There's that uh, genetic type, you know, and then there's the situational type where we're affected by something in our environment. And I think it helps enormously, 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 and I will say, I speak from experience here, I'll be totally honest with you, it helps to move through to get over depression by being willing, you know, to want to get over it. All right, God, this is how I feel. And I have said this more than once in the last year and a half, laying on my living room rug. God, this is how I feel, but I am willing to feel differently. Universe, I am willing to feel differently. See, the thing I notice about depression is that people want to um, whisk those bad feelings away. Mm -hmm. That we want it just, we just want it to stop. You know, realize that you are not only feeling depressed, but it's not just the feeling. What I notice is people tend to behave in a depressed way when they're telling themselves they're depressed, right? So you can change your behavior and your feelings will actually change. If you change the state of what your body is doing, you know, like one of the best things I can do, and I am grateful for her every day, she was always on my list of gratitude, is my dog, that I have to walk my dog about eight times a day. Can you imagine? And so eight times a day, I cannot just give in to what's going on in my head, or if I'm feeling badly in that moment. And you know, as soon as I take her out and start to walk with my dog, I feel instantly better. So I know that changing what my physicality is doing changes the state of my mind, the state of my consciousness. You know, and, and you can change the same way we can change the way that we perceive things. Um, now, I, maybe I'm the only person. Maybe I am the only person during COVID who has felt at some times depressed but I don't think so. Um, I think everyone has had moments of, uh, of sad, uh, you know, it comes and goes, but if you've really been depressed, you know it. You know, and sometimes I really, um, I make my very best effort and I wrestle with my demons, you know? But then other times I'm just not in that place, and so other days I just cuddle with them, I guess. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's, it, I think that there's, um, 
You know, when I talk about the Bible, I always say that everyone and everything in the Bible takes place in us. And so I have a real resonance with, with the Christ story. Um, and, but some years back, we went to Italy. A group from our church went to Italy. And one of the things we did, of course, is we went to the Vatican. And in the Vatican, there's just such incredible spiritual artwork there. And one of the things that I was really looking forward to seeing, I had seen it before, and I had such an impact on me, was Michelangelo's Pieta. And this is the sculpture that Michelangelo did, this big white marble sculpture of Mary, and Jesus is laying across her lap, and he's been taken down off the cross. Right? It's a very, very powerful, powerful piece. Um, and I think that there's, there's like an archetype there uh, that is deeply in us, and it's the pain that we experience in grief and loss. You know, and you see this sculpture, and boy, it is so, so real. You know, what I find is that people so often want to manage their feelings. Um, you know, that they, they experience some difficulty, they experience some pain, and it's like already before they're even fully in the experience, they have a compartment that they want to put it into in their life. You know, I'm going to shove this down here and maybe I'll deal with it much, much, much later. But see, I think, I'm going to go back to the religious artwork. The religious artwork, I suppose, is supposed to evoke something deeper in us. It's not just about, oh, how wonderful Michelangelo is. It's about that he's like, creates something that reaches into us and touches something very deep. You know, in the scriptures it says, blessed are those who have faith and cannot see. Even when there's no evidence, you know, to the contrary, this is the science of mind teaching. Blessed are those who have faith and cannot see. So this idea of depression, I think depression is like a crucifixion. It's a pattern of energy. And, and like this pattern of crucifixion, this energy pattern, we go through crucifixions again and again and again. And the thing that really stands out for me now as I look at this is that there is a period of time, and, and it's not necessarily three days, like Jesus spent three days in the tomb before he resurrected, I think when we have crucifixion in our life, there's a period of time. So say that crucifixion is depression. And people might be depressed for three days, three weeks, three years. Oh, gosh. You know. So, but there is that period. There is a period of time there. And that is, I think, the working out of, of the energy pattern. Today, I think crucifixion is not so much what other people do to us, but how we interpret, and this is what's going on now for people during COVID, but how we interpret what's happening. Crucifixion, I think, is more about our limited mind, our limited thinking. Now, what I know is true is that God in us is greater than the small, limited thinking that we have on, in any particular moment. You know, I think that if we look at great spiritual teachers who've been on the planet, they have always, or most always, held to something greater. Right? So I think depression, if people are experiencing that, what you need to know is this is my time in the tomb. Right? This is just my time in the tomb. However long that is, you're, well, it's been going on long enough. Yes, it is. Yes, it certainly is. But know this, that when there is crucifixion, crucifixion, the energy pattern to be complete means that there is always a resurrection. There will be one. This too shall pass. Right? That's what it says in the Bible. It says, and it came to pass. It doesn't say, and it came to stay. It came to pass. So this that I'm experiencing now, I know that it will go away. And see, just knowing that, knowing that this too will pass, yes, it stinks right now, but it's going to pass, it makes me much more hopeful. I think people have been depressed because of how they, and I include myself in this, are interpreting the circumstances. You know, what are we telling ourselves? This is key. So wherever we experience this separation, and depression is definitely a sense of separation from God, we have to ask ourselves, what am I telling myself? You know? So it's not our circumstances that are depressing us, but how we interpret those circumstances. You know, I have to learn from this. This circumstance, I have to get everything from it right now because I don't want to experience it again and again and again. And we all understand, if we don't get the learning out of an experience, the experience visits us at a later date to say, hey, how about now? Would you like to learn it now? No, I don't want to learn it now either. OK, we'll be back again. Right? See, if I, didn't believe, if I didn't believe that negativity was incredibly powerful before this, I know it now. So I had the opportunity to visit with someone recently, uh, someone that I've known for a very, very long time. 
Uh, and, uh, but we've had very little contact in, the con uh, contact in the last few decades, okay? So I was struck in this conversation by how powerfully negative they were about everything. Now, you know, I kind of live in a science of mind bubble. I live in a world where people are looking to improve the quality of their life and make things better for the world that they live in. And so I guess I just hadn't been with anybody who was so profoundly negative in a while. And, and, and it, it kind of stumped me, you know. I just started to go, wow. And, and because I wanted to say things, you know. And I knew that I should not say those things. So <laughs> I just sort of chewed on the inside of my lips a little bit there, you know. That, so they were really negative about the world and people and the future, and it was very obvious um, that there was, in this case, a causal relationship in their life by the way they were talking about life and people and living, and it was all so dark and so awful, and what they were experiencing. Because what they were saying about life was exactly what they were experiencing, right? And it's like, do you not see that there is a connection here, right? That, that uh, between her uh, attitudes, thoughts, perceptions, observations, all of those things, and the way her life was out picturing for her. She was miserable. She had miserable thoughts. She was having a miserable experience. Oh my God, was this an opportunity for science of mind? I couldn't do a thing about it. I could not do a thing. I have sent her the magazine in the past. It went in the trash. So, ah, you know, just gotta love you where you are. We just love people where they are. People have been thinking in a negative, limited way for centuries, right? Now, His Holiness the Dalai Lama said, choose to be optimistic. It feels better. So if for no other reason, why wouldn't we be optimistic just because it's going to feel better? You know, we tell ourselves, I'm depressed because. I'm depressed because I lost my job, or I'm depressed because of my house, my partner, my this, my that. It's not what happens. Our teaching is what our mind does with what happens. This is the key. We are, you know, so often it's like we've caught the ball, even if the ball is on fire, right? We've caught the ball and we're running. And now we're running with the ball, the ball's on fire, it's not good for us, but we've caught it, so we're keeping it. You know, by God, I'm running out of the stadium, down the street, and past, you know. The way out is through. This is the thing around anything emotional. The way out is through. I, I have come to understand that, you know, people have to feel everything they have going on inside themselves. Because you can't just bypass it, right? Jesus could resurrect because he knew the truth about himself, the essential him. We resurrect from conditions in our life because we know the spiritual truth about ourselves, that we are made in the image and likeness of God, that we are spiritual beings, that we are a consciousness that is always experiencing and expressing more life, more love. There are lots of images of suffering in the Christian uh, teaching. And... Um, and as a kid, that was, that was kind of a scary thing. You know, you see these pictures of, of people and they have arrows in them and they've been tortured and stuff like that. Uh, now, humanly, humanly, we all know it hurts, right? That if we're fearful in our thinking, if we're limited in our thinking, if we're really doubtful, if we're thinking from, from outside of us uh, to the inside, you know, it's when we're in it, the pain is very real. I get that. You know, there's an old Yiddish proverb that says, to, the worm, to a worm in horseradish, the world is horseradish. You know? And I get that. That makes sense to me. Because, like, you know, when you're in your stuff, you're really in it. You can't see the way out. But science of mind teaches us there's always a way out. You know, so I think that, for me, the Christ story is the story of human consciousness. We all have or have had experiences where, um, where we deal, uh, well, no. We all have had experiences where we did not think we would make it through, right? I mean, maybe even in the last year, year and a half for people. I certainly have. I suspect you have too. And it seems to me that this thing called depression is what the mind gets bogged down with when the mind is in darkness. This is why it's so crucial that we stay on the affirmative side of the street, that we keep our mind filled 
with spiritual truth, that we keep our mind filled with light. You know, in the science of mind, we don't really have the concept of sin uh, as they do in other teachings. It's, um, it's just a sin is, is a mistake, a mistaken perception. So it's not something you did that was bad. It was a mistaken interpretation about something in life. Oh, gee, I was seeing it this way, but now I could see it this way. Seeing it this way disempowers me, but seeing it a different way actually lifts me up. See, and so like the idea of sin, we don't actually have hell in science of mind. Um, I could say quite simply today is that hell is when you are separate from joy. I think that's what it is. Any place where we are separate from joy, we're in hell. Now, joy, I say all the time, is what God's love feels like, right? So hell, yep, been there, been there, I know about that. But I also know what God's love feels like. Feels much better than hell, doesn't it? So I want to be in more joy. It's like saying, you know, I want to feel more of God's love in my life all the time. See, ultimately, we will be delivered. You know, it's just we get to decide how long it's going to take. You know, if, we, if, if all we look at is the crucifixion, that's, that's an incomplete cycle of energy. A woman told me um, a while back, and I thought this was so interesting, she said that whenever she looked at Jesus on the cross, it made her very, very sad. And this was her faith tradition. But it still made her very, very sad. And I said, you know, you have to look at the whole story. She said, what do you mean the whole story? Jesus was crucified. I said, yes, but he was also resurrected. And this means something for each of us, that yes, we may all experience a dark night, but there's never a dark, a dark night that doesn't pass. You know, the dark is always followed by the light. So the crucifixion is just a setup for the resurrection, and this is the same for us. If everybody in the Bible is within us, Every time we have a crucifixion in our life, the whole point of that crucifixion is because we are supposed to be resurrected into a greater expression of life. I think, you know, you have to honor what comes up for you emotionally. Um, I think you just do, because denying them, no good comes from denying our emotions. I think the way we deal with it now is you feel what you feel, you know, and once you really felt, felt what you needed to feel, then you can move on. See, I think we struggle with feelings we don't want because we're always trying to push them away or suppress them or deny them or say they're unspiritual. You know, feelings you have are the feelings you have. I remember a story years ago that I'd heard about a devotee who um, was very close, one of the Buddha's uh, closest disciples. And when this devotee passed on, uh, the Buddha was crying. And one of the other devotees was very surprised and said, well, I, you're supposed to be the Buddha. Why are you crying? And the Buddha's response was this, I'm sad. That's it. It was authentic. It was true. It was totally real in that moment. So I don't think that it's spiritual to deny what we're feeling. But I do think that it is of the utmost of spirit that we are able to transform and redeem that which we are feeling right now. Um, Behind the darkness, again, there's always the light. So, um, I think that every time, when I look back and I think, gee, every time that I've been really sad about something, you know what, that, that sadness always seems to humble me and remind me I need to hold the truth. I need to stay close, close, close to spiritual truth. And yes, we have crucifixions, but I think we're supposed to honor those crucifixions because we know there will, in fact, be a resurrection. Everything. Everything is working for our good. You know, we could hold to it in a way that it's all part of our healing. You know? That I can hold this in faith. It's all part of my healing. You know, in A Course in Miracles, it says this wonderful line that's always been my favorite, would you rather be right or happy? And I know, for me, if I'm right, I will be happy. But the truth is, <laughs> I, have to I have to be willing to release my being right. I have to let that go and go for happy. You know, because the universe is set up to support us. I believe that, that we live in a universe that totally thrives on us doing well. And so, you know, I know what you're thinking. You think, oh, well, you know, I did it to myself. And, you know, it's, well, welcome to Earth, right? Everybody has. Forgive yourself, move on. I think we get depressed because we forget how much we are loved by God. For me, that's really the bottom line. I have to remember that every day, I am here because God, the love intelligence of the universe, chose to create me and you out of itself. There's always rebirth on the other side. 
You know, the, I think the ego mind, that part of our human personality, loves to tell us, you had it good, but you blew it. Well, you know, we, we have infinite opportunities to get it right. You know, yeah, this is how I feel, but I'm willing to feel differently. So the Christian spiritual writer, C.S. Lewis, he said it like this. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. I think that's the science of mind philosophy, that whatever has gone on before, that's water under the bridge. Great, I hope we learn something from all of it. But right now, starting right now in this moment, we can change the story however it's unfolding. So join me as we turn our attention inward this morning and we do some inner work together. Bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. Just notice that you're breathing in, notice that you're breathing out, and allow your attention to completely rest on your breath. So I know for each and every one of us here today that the place whereon we stand is holy ground. And that we are standing in the midst of our own personal spiritual transformation. And it is unfolding perfectly for each and every one of us. In the midst of our most difficult lessons, I affirm the truth for each and every one of us that we are gaining strength that we are growing in power, that we are increasing in wisdom, and we are being fulfilled in every single need. I know for each and every one of us that we are faced with a divine opportunity for God to demonstrate just how awesome the power of God in each and every one of us is. And we say yes to this. I know it's the truth. I accept it. And knowing our oneness with God and that we are all connected with each other, in the mind and heart of God. We include all of our loved ones, all of those we hold near and dear in our prayer today. And we know right where they are, God is fully present, that they are surrounded, filled with the truth that makes them free. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So emanating out from this sanctuary is an energy of love and healing that lifts all people everywhere, no one excluded. We bless our church, all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. I know we're blessed by being together, that there is healing, there is raising up for each and every one of us. And so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it's done, and so it is, and so we let it be. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. gonna be someone I'm gonna give something I'm taking it all I'm taking it all and it's gonna be my life 
I'm going to live each day and each night I'm taking it all. Yes, I'm taking it all Cause I can't keep hiding No, I can't keep hiding And I won't keep running be a braver soul than this I'm gonna jump on all those many chances that I missed I'm gonna live my life so far beyond these forms of fear and cowardice that kept pushing me on I'm gonna shine out like a beacon in the night the stars tonight cause I'm taking it all yes I'm taking it all and you know you know you know that I can't keep hiding no I can't keep hiding and I Reverend Karen Mitchell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was beautiful. And thank you to our beautiful musical support here from Nelson Cole, Karen Smith. <laughs> so if you'd like a little bit more of that musical inspiration from Karen, Reverend Karen, her music can be uh, gotten at karenmitchellmusic.com. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who are watching uh, via Zoom and Facebook Live, uh, donations over the phone can be made uh, if you call into the church office for about 30 minutes after service. We'll be there to take your call, and you can make a donation via credit or debit card, or you can uh, go online 
and hcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can make a one-time or set up recurring donations. And you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And we've just been reminding folks that uh, also if you shop on Amazon, if you do Amazon Smile, and designate our church as the recipient of a donation, you'll find us as Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood, and make us the charity of your choice, and we get something every time you make a purchase. So however you continue to support us, just know how much we appreciate it. We love being here to support you and remind you of who you really are as thank you, Dr. Mark, for reminding us all. Next time you feel depressed, you know what to do, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Did you take notes? <laughs> okay, prayer with the practitioner is available on Zoom after service. Um, and so if you're attending this service on Facebook Live, just go to our website and connect on Zoom, and we can put you in a private breakout room with a practitioner. If you are here in person and would like prayer with a practitioner, please come forward to the front of the sanctuary. And uh, we have a couple of practitioners here that uh, are here to pray with you, if you would like that kind of support. Um, also, I forgot to let you know, if you're here in the sanctuary and are making a donation, there are boxes at the, in the foyer as you exit after the service where you can drop off your donations. Emailing prayer requests. So during the week, you want us, something comes up, you want us to pray for you, just send an email to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and option four on the menu allows you to leave a message uh, with your prayer request and we check those messages and emails every evening so that all our practitioners are notified and you'll be supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service. This coming Wednesday, August 25th, the pre-service meditation starts at 6.50, service starts at 7 p.m. in person and uh, virtually as well. And our guest speaker this week is our practitioner, Daryl W. Gurney, and I'll be joining him. And Daryl's topic is what appeared to be for evil, God meant for my awesomeness. Mm. You know, I'll be there. <laughs> our youth church is open. Uh, we're so excited to welcome back our youth, ages 3 through 18, uh, back to the 945 service, the one service we're having right now. And uh, if you have children that are under three years um, we do have someone who's volunteered to watch them, but in case they're not there, you can also have them in the Mommy, Daddy, and Me room. Uh, so please, if that's been holding you back, feel free uh, to come back, and we will welcome you with open arms. Grief Support Group. Uh, this group that's facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. All are welcome. And We'll be having a celebration of life service for our absolutely beloved longtime congregant, Mary Jane Hendry, this uh, on Saturday, September 4th at 2 p.m. in the sanctuary and on Zoom. All are welcome to join, uh, and the Zoom link can be found on our website. Zoom virtual patio for those of you who are joining virtually to stay connected and visit. That's still going on 20 minutes before and then after service. Our men's group continues to meet on Zoom every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation every Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15. Uh, all are welcome. And information on that and so much more is on our website nhcrs.org, where you can also sign up for our monthly e -blast, uh, weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And with that, I think I'm going to step off the stage, let Dr. Mark stand up here, and let's join in singing this peace song. <laughs> <laughs>
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Make sure you all say hello to Reverend Sidney and Charlie.